Okay. To your left. Yeah. Okay. Transgender is only a label, it's only a generic term for a vast spectrum of identities. From on the one extreme you've got drag kings and drag queens, you've got transvestites and fetish and sissies, and then you've got people like myself transgender in the process of transitioning. I can't possibly speak for everybody who's transgender or feels they come under that umbrella label. So I'm only going to share my own insights, my own perspective. I was born with a male body, but I have a feminine soul. I feel intuitively feminine. Well, I wonder if you can guess where I am. This is Oxford, in fact, my hometown. And I've lived here for 30 years. And yet I've never really felt entirely at home. I've always felt like an outsider looking in. And I've wondered and asked myself why that is. And I think it has a lot to do with the university. And the university is synonymous with success. And with that success comes, I think, pride. And it's a pride that permeates the city and all in its culture. Success all too easily leads to pride. And with pride, it's all too easy to lose the gift of empathy, to lose the gift of our common, shared and broken humanity. The right reverend, Bishop, professor and revered theologian N.T. Wright is a resident professor at Wycliffe College in Oxford. And he wrote a letter to The Times about me and about us as transgender. And it was a letter which shocked many because it came across in a very condescending, mocking and almost arrogant tone which doesn't fit the character that I know Tom to be. But in the letter, <coughs> he accused us as transgender of being Gnostics um, and perpetuating that ancient heresy of Gnosticism. He also said that transgender was a modern internet fueled fad and fashionable fantasy. And um, in doing that, really, he was dismissing the medical and clinical diagnoses and conditions of uh, dysmorphia and gender dysphoria. So it was quite a surprising stance to take. The problem for N.T. Wright, Bishop N.T. Wright, is that the label transgender is only a, it's only a label, an umbrella term for a multitude of identities which don't conform to a strict Christian binary of male and female. In that, it's much like the term eunuch, which has been used throughout history and across diverse cultures to really describe a similar range of identities, those that are non-binary, gender fluid, gender transgressing, who don't fit, again, within the binary of male and female. And in many ways, whilst not exactly the same, transgender and eunuch do cover very similar identities. Franciscan monks who travelled through India in 1650 recorded seeing a people called the Hijra, who are eunuchs, a transgender people, which date back in history three and a half thousand years. During the era of the Raj, the empire, as part of Christendom, they sought to eradicate the Hijra because they believed them to be a perverse sect. The truth is the caste of the Hijra uh, recorded and they date back, if you look through the Hindu scriptures of the Mahabhatra and the Ramayana, which are dated to at least 400 years before Christ, then there is documentation of the Hijra. The Mahabhatra and the Ramayana are considered classics, poems, uh, history, a bit like Greek myths and legends. So these ancient Hindu scriptures are comparable to Greek myths. They are the same era as the Jewish scriptures. And within Greek myth and within Asian myth and within Eastern myth, there are records of transgender people or gender fluid people or non-binary people, which date back thousands of years. So myths capture the collective consciousness of a people. They capture deeply held beliefs, deeply rooted cultural values.
when Spain and Portugal invaded South America as an exploring invading force for Christianity. They put thousands to the sword and they set about destroying native and indigenous cultures and identities. When Cortez, Cortez the killer landed in Mexico in the 1500s, uh, inquisitions and massacres soon followed and Christendom very much targeted those who were non-binary priests and those within tribal cultures that lived outside of the norm of male and female who transgressed the boundaries. Today, all that's left of uh, non-binary culture, tribes, expression and identity in South America is the uh, Muje of Mexico, of the Zapotec tribe. And they are really the only last surviving trace of a eunuch or what we might loosely call a transgender people. When the Protestants invaded North America, the same programme of erasure was followed. They discovered, and it's documented, that there were many non-binary peoples, non-binary identifying people within the First Nation Native Indigenous Indian tribes. And the Protestants uh, condemned, attacked, imprisoned those that were non-binary, those who were two spirit. And by the middle of last century, they were all but wiped out from Native American Indian culture. So when N.T. Wright says that we are a modern internet fueled fad, fashionable fantasy, then I think history would actually show that as a eunuch transgender people, we have been around for thousands of years in many cultures and it's actually Christianity that has sought to erase us all along. If only Bishop N.T. Wright would be willing to climb down from his throne of judgment and actually talk to us, then he might discover that some of his theories are actually wrong. Today in modern Albania, there's a group of people called the Banesha. And the Banesha are people who were born female, women, but who identified from very early age as male, and they live their entire lives <clears throat> as male members of Albanian society and they're revered and respected for that position within society. But the only reason that the Banesha of Albania exist is because Christianity never penetrated Albanian, the, the nation or the culture. Had Christianity succeeded in Albania, then very probably the Banesha would have been erased from culture and history. It's quite sobering. So I've spoken a little bit about transgender um, through culture and through history. And next week I'm going to talk a little bit about disciples. Who are they? Who were they? Do they still exist today? What does it mean to be a disciple? Um, really thank you for listening and watching. And I hope that you'll come along to listen to the next video. Thank you.